as we gather on this Independence Day weekend, we celebrate both the freedom of our nation and the freedom we have in Christ. Let us lift our hearts in gratitude for the liberty we enjoy and the ultimate freedom found in our Savior. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I pray that not only are you enjoying your Independence Day weekend with the hamburgers, the hot dogs, and the fireworks, but I pray that through it all, that you have the Lord Jesus Christ out front. So, Let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from Psalm 33, 12 through 15, Psalm 33, 12 through 15, and it reads as follows. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From the heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. And that is something to definitely keep in mind as we are not only celebrating Independence Day weekend, but we are in an election year. So let's keep that in mind as we move forward. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with our hearts full of thanks and praise as always. On this Independence Day weekend, we thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this nation and for the ultimate freedom we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask for your blessings upon our country, though we know we don't deserve it. For we know that there are many here who do not believe in you, who do not follow your word. There are some that talk it, but don't walk it. But we pray, Lord, for, the, for those that are here, that are trying, that we may be a nation that seeks your guidance and honors your name. Lord, we remember those who have sacrificed for our earthly freedoms and pray for your protection and strength for those who continue to serve. Those who stand the watch out there in a the foreign country, maybe on a ship, maybe in the battlefield who are getting to know you for the very first time because of the silence and the, and the solitude out there. We also lift up those around the world who long for this freedom and justice, and may your peace and justice prevail in every land. So as we come to you today, help us focus on your goodness and grace. Fill our hearts with joy and our voices with praise. May your spirit move among us, drawing us nearer to you and to one another, especially during this time where people are saying things and doing things more to divide us. Help us come together, Lord. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. On this Independence Day weekend, as we all gather with friends and family to celebrate this country that we live in, this country that represents the earthly definition of freedom around the world. We also pray to represent the spiritual definition of freedom around the world through each believer that lives here in understanding how to share the grace of Jesus Christ even in times that we live in, where you got more people fighting for earthly democracy, we are fighting for spiritual democracy. And through that, we do that through his word, the Bible, God's holy word. And we pray to share something with someone that will help them come to understand that while earthly freedom is important because we live here and we want to be good stewards of the world, to be great ambassadors for Jesus Christ. It's that part that should come first, being an ambassador for Jesus Christ to this world. And when we do that, we don't have to worry about our earthly freedom because there'll be enough of us out there being ambassadors to hold these people accountable. And not only that, shine the light of God through Christ on them so that they may do the will of the Lord. And with that, 
There's only one topic to talk about. You are free. Live like it. That's our topic. That's where we're going. Turn with me to Galatians 5.1. Galatians 5.1 reads as follows. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you now to bless the reading of your already blessed word. We ask you to dive into your understanding of biblical freedom in this world so that we may project it into our earthly freedom. We ask you, Lord, to give us the ears to hear, the tongues to say, the eyes to see, and the mind to think on the things of you and you only. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're free. Live like it. Last month, the country celebrated the acknowledgement of all the slaves being officially notified of their freedom. June 19th is now forever known as Juneteenth here in the United States. What is it? Many have no idea. So let's take our clarity from the White House proclamation that was signed in 2021, recognizing this historical event. On June 19th, 1865, nearly nine decades after our nation's founding and more than two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, enslaved Americans in Galveston, Texas finally received word that they were free from bondage. As those who were formerly enslaved were recognized for the first time as citizens, Black Americans came to commemorate Juneteenth with celebrations across the country, building new lives and a new tradition that we honor today. You might see it as a federal holiday and might get that day off if it's part of your employee package. <laughs> Those that don't still find ways to recognize it, I'm sure. Here's a little theology to go with this. These were people who had no idea they were free. Deliverance from this, from this oppression had come and they had no clue. And just like those slaves that are still people out there that are slaves today that have no idea that they are free. Can you imagine that? Just like those, for those slaves, there are still people out there that are slaves today that have no idea they are free. It's just like the shackles look different and the freedom we talk about didn't come in the form of emancipation proclamation, but that of God who sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. It's because of Jesus we have victory over sin through him. And to know this is to know spiritual freedom and physical freedom. Because if you say you are free because of Jesus Christ, you should act like it. Because we live in a world where people are enslaved to sin. They are shackled to addictions of all sorts. Immorality, lawlessness, just to name a few. And anything that is called into accountability is considered judging. And instead of calling out the lie, the deception, the sin for what it is, some simply evaluate how much they have to invest in the lie before it breaks peace and fellowship and makes them uncomfortable. Others just remain silent and in that silence they become part of sin's chain gang, bringing themselves alongside sinners not calling it as they see it and soon participating in it. For it's written in James 4.17, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, it is sin for them. And as we all enjoy the long weekend celebrating this nation's independence from cookouts to family time, fireworks and stuff, we are looking forward to celebrating the independence of a son, a daughter, a wife, a husband, a neighbor from the bondage of sin to celebrate when they realize they are no longer slaves to sin and that Jesus Christ has declared it through his death and resurrection. 
that he went to the cross to die for their sins, even as they were sinning. And if we're going to bring great significance to earthly freedoms, we should be even more excited for those who are freed spiritually, who can work every day in their relationship with Jesus, with the rest of us. So what does it mean to live like we are free in Christ? We're in Galatians 5, 1, an attempt to answer that question. Galatians is the story of people who were in between a rock and a hard place where they had the people who were trying to tell them they still had to maintain the customs and traditions where Paul is trying to tell them you are free in Christ and that that stuff is not going to get you to heaven. Only faith in Jesus is. But what does it look like to be free in Jesus, to live free in Christ? Here's some thoughts. We live free in Christ, and you should, because Christ's whole purpose for coming to earth in the form of a man was to die for you to be free from sin and the consequence of sin, facing God's wrath, by the way, and to be your advocate. Scripture says this, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And to be an advocate is to be someone who publicly is recommending or supporting you even when everyone says you're not the one. You deserve nothing. It's too late for you. You're too old for it. Even it doesn't even matter anymore. Jesus Christ takes all of those words away in telling us this in John 5, 21 through 24. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Verily, truly, I say to you, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and who will and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. My friends, that's freedom. That's the pathway to freedom right there. And the reason why the world cannot grasp these words is because their slave master, Satan, has promised them everything in this world and has created a justification as to why right now is more important than what's to come. And in this deception, they think they are free, but they are slaves. It's like waking up and going outside and smelling the air and walking through your yard and cutting grass and then you hit a bar. You go around it, hit another bar. And you realize this is just how much freedom you've got because you're in a cage. You can do what you want, live how you want, say what you want, but it is given to you within the bounds of a cage. And then you realize you're not free at all, but you have been living in a perception of freedom. Living free means I'm going to live like I'm no longer caged in that deception and live in the freedom Christ has given us. That is the only freedom I want to live in. The freedom as Christ defines it. The freedom as Christ wants me to use it. The freedom in the way Christ sees me living for the purposes of the kingdom and to be able to bless me as well as give God the glory for great things he has done and be a light to this world that's wondering how I'm doing it. But not only... Do we understand Christ's purpose here? But we also should stand firm in our freedom in Christ. This is where the rubber hits the road, people. This is where people have a hard, hard time right now. Because in 2024, it's all about the compromise, isn't it? It's all about coming to the middle and we have created this gray area where those that may not believe what you believe and those who are doing whatever they want to do are coming into the middle and they're dwelling there never really pushing one or the other over to the place of righteousness stand firm in your freedom in christ the verse goes on to say stand firm then and I find it so perplexing how many Christians fall for the words like, 
love the sinner, hate the sin. Yet knowing and saying that, they know the sinner still goes to hell. And we get upset when we forgive these people time and time again because first we're called to forgive, and then we're, we're loving on them time and time again, and we get burned over and over because we fail to tell them about the freedom they have if they would just repent and be free of Satan's shackles. But we don't stand firm, and we get taken advantage of from people living in unrepentance, because that's what it is, called a spade a spade, who are quick to hold us to our biblical accountability and would curse you for holding them to it. You are free. Stand firm in the truth of God. Be unshakable in his promises. You are in the, if we are in a situation where a person or an event that has you considering compromise, call it for what it is. It's compromise. Call that out immediately. Don't you sit there and cross that line. Because once you cross it, you might not come back. They want you to do that. And if it can't be reconciled to Christ, then let it be known that you remain unshaken, unmoved, unfiltered in your belief in God's word. Because see, you're going to come across people that want to remain slaves because they believe they are being tended to by their sin that they can justify their sin to make it worse. And what they desire even more are people who will simply affirm it. And when we read stand firm then, look at the word then. You're probably wondering why that conjunction is there. Now it's there because standing firm is connected to the understanding of the first part of the verse. That is, it is for freedom that Christ has us free. It's because we know this that we should do that. Stand firm. These are two statements of equal importance brought together to tell us because I believe I do. And when we stand firm, the world notices and realizes that we are living free, not in our truth, but in the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, our true provider of freedom. And then finally, to live free is to never return again to the slave quarters of hell. This is the place you lived, ate, loved, and dwelled before you were freed by Jesus. In these slave quarters is where your sin resided with you, where you, where you dined and indulged in that sin. To return to this place to say that even though I know I'm a follower of Jesus Christ now, I know I've been freed. There are still things I've missed, enjoyed, or found important as a slave of sin that I cannot let go of. And that's why so many stay in that cell. They've gotten so used to the conditions that to actually be free, they don't know how to function. Think about how many people who are in prison right now who are there because of reoccurring offenses. Many of them actually commit crimes to go back to those conditions because they really don't know what it's like to live free. They're uncomfortable with it, literally uncomfortable with it. They commit the crime, they do the time, they get back out, okay, you're free. All right, well, go live your life and try to act right. They can't. They got so used to the provision of the prison. They got so used to the environment of the prison. They got so used to being around people like them in the prison. They got so used to being guarded over by their uh, correctional officers in the warden in the prison, that to leave that environment and come out to the light of being free and doing what you want within the bounds of righteousness, to, to be able to enjoy 
a walk in the park, to be able to go to a baseball game or to maybe even get your license and get a little part-time job or something. That is daunting to them. Because now they got to trust on something else other than the conditions they were in. They have become dependent on being a prisoner. Don't become dependent on being a, a, a prisoner. And if these things you are dealing with change, repent. I want you to fall right now on your knees and pray because you, you're free and you should be acting like it. God has brought you up out of your mess. And here you are rushing right back to it because it's the last thing you knew that was secure in your life. I'm here to tell you today, I want you to live in, live in your different. I want you to live in the different that God has put you in. It might have you in a neighborhood of a different culture, a different demographic of people, maybe a different lifestyle of people, different class of people. Live in that different. And every time you think about going back to where you came from, think about the mess you were in. Think about the drama you were in. Think about the quality of people you were around who are not trying to be free, but yet God heard your cry and set you free. The only reason you go back there is to tell them how to be free, not to live amongst them. Tell them how to be free. Why? Because God has set you free through Christ Jesus. Why are you not sharing the means to be saved? Because there's something back there in those slave quarters that you enjoyed. And it's not always something physical. It can be guilt, shame, mistakes made, overdoing stuff, being more extra than you need to, quantifying your existence on what you can do for others rather than qualifying your existence other than the blood of Christ in which you claim you now live. And if these are things you are still living with because of things you experience as a slave to sin, then I'm here to tell you live free from it because you now know the chain breaker and he has broken your chains and you need to live like you're free in the love of Jesus Christ who gives the gift of grace freely. And if you're here today and you realize that you're a slave in a building full of freed slaves, then here's your chance to declare your freedom through Christ. Here's your chance to stop looking beyond the bars of the prison you're in, your chance to go further in the life of Christ as for you than to get snatched by a chain connected to a ball known as sin, reminding you you can only go but so far because this is what you connected to. Repent, confess, and be free. John 8, 32 says, says it this way, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Then you jump down to John 8, 36, which says, so if the son sets you free, then you will be free indeed. And when you know you're free and are living free, do it. First Peter 2, 16 says, and that is live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Be a slave to the faith of Jesus Christ. Serve it diligently. Let it yet go down to James 1.22 where it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And when you repent, confess, and come into relationship with Jesus Christ, keep learning the word and keep doing the word, you'll be able to inform other slaves because Christ does the freeing of the slaves by simply letting them know what Romans 6.23 says. Put it on your mouth, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when they get it, and they're walking free with you, you can give God the glory, and you let them know what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. 
the new is here. My question for y'all today is, if you're so free, do you act like it? Or do you act like the world when things go wrong? If you're so free, do you call wrong wrong or do you kind of ride the line because you don't want to cause a problem? If you're so free, do you stand firm on it? Or are you easily broken when the comforts of your environment are jeopardized and you start double backing on what you said about sin, all sin, if the pressures mount? Because when it's your turn, it, it will be your turn one day to stand firm. What you going to do? Are you going to show people how free you are in Jesus Christ? Or are you going to compromise and fail and be a walking advertisement for hell? Because Satan doesn't always kill you. He'll keep you alive. He'll put a sign on you. And everybody will know that you was the one that claimed, oh, you know, I'm, I love the Lord. And you go in the church and you're reading your Bible and you're clacking your hands to all the hymns. And the moment the time came for you to stand firm and show people your freedom in Jesus Christ, you buckled. And oh, what a comeback story that would be if you just turned back. But you got to turn back, though. That's the thing. And if you don't turn back, people will see that too. That's why I love the Lord Jesus Christ so much. Because in our mistakes, in our poor effort at being the best we can be, we still fail. And there's nothing that we can do that will ever come close to what he's done for us. But how we reflect what he's done for us, though, can only be done by what he imparts in us to reflect it. If I'm reflecting Christ, it's because I'm looking up to Christ. And I can see Christ. And he can reflect onto the world off of me. Be free, because you are free. Act like it. And may God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. And as you celebrate Independence Day weekend, Celebrate your, celebrate your independence in Jesus Christ from a world spiritually that is losing its way. But there is hope because his people are still here. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And you take care. <laughs>